friends when i joined medicine and when i passed out my medicine i think i was the youngest i was just 21 then i finished my ms by before 24 i finished my frics in cardiac surgery by 26 now i know what all of you go through i also had the same feeling when you join for medicine that that time it was pre medicine we were the first pre medicine batch before that it was intermediate then pre university came then pre medicine so you think that once you enter the medical college you have become a doctor then after pre medicine the first time be you will start wearing a coat with a half sleeve again you are elated then second mp now now it is first mp is one and a half years second mp is one and a half years and then final mp i think it is different now one one year two years etc now what i want to tell you is this after introduction of neat i am not saying that neat is bad it is very good at this there is some uniformity but unfortunately what happens is you are learning neat in fact it is neat science you don't know anything else and because of your percentile whatever is mark percentile you get into medicine as i said when you come to the second mb the coat becomes a till the sleeve becomes long and you start wearing a stethoscope and knee hammer etc etc and you think that you are a big man and you come to final mb you are busy with your studies so the day you get those two letters dr you are top on the world but after 6 months you realize that you are nowhere because again now you have to appear for one need one more need that is for what is that depend b or md or ms or whatever it is so you study and uh, it takes i think Three years for depend be or uh, MD or MS, but your classmate in the school, he has finished his MBA or MCA or BBA or whatever it is. Now he gets about forty, forty-five thousand rupees, fifty thousand rupees starting. You are starting at fifteen thousand rupees, and in fact nobody wants you. That is the other sad part. Then go through three years, and in the end. you will realize that your md and uh, depend be in medicine is of no use so again you have to go for a super specialization say for example cardiology neurology nephrology whatever it is again another need so write the need and get into it and what you will be used as the fellows to look after the night duties write case sheets make discharge summaries and sometimes you might be able to if you if you are in cardiology you might be able to put a needle in the femoral artery finish by the time you finish this all these things you are 40 42 naturally got married has got two kids or one kid whatever it is you have a wife to support a kid to support and you get after your depend be dm 50000 rupees 60000 rupees so what i am saying is what is important is you have to stand separate for that what you need is team work i'm sorry to say that you have no team work now this is when i was a house surgeon not house surgeon 
Sydney Government, Senior House Officer in Sydney, St. George Hospital. And these are my passports. I was a migrant to United States and migrant to Australia. You know when? 1969. And I finished all these things, uh, you know, in Australia, New Zealand and uh, United States. And I had a job as Associate Professor of Pediatric Cardiac Surgery, University of Cincinnati with $86,000, big salary. I used to drive a sports Mustang, red color Mustang. You know, even now Mustang is one of the most uh, wanted sports cars. You know, th this is the operating room in uh, So I decided what is the use of having all these degrees? Why not go back to India and see what I can do? None of you people will, co will come back, I know it. If you are getting $86,000 per month residence. So I came back to railways. Because railway was the only place where I could show that I can do something on my own. So this is the it's very important teamwork. I can't do anything unless you have a team. Who was the link? You know, Dr. Kalyan Singh was the chief of anesthesia. Now, we all joined together and this is the first coronary bypass surgery done in this country. And that was my sixth operation. I never realized that I was doing the first open heart surgery. Now, the other you can see on the right hand side, that's an infant which is covered in ice bag. That is what is known as profound hypothermia circulatory arrest induced by surface cooling. And these were the, the obsolete equipments we had. And this was our post-operative. This is a two and a half kilo child. The reason why I'm saying is, till then, no institution in this country, whether it is Delhi, Bombay, Calcutta, these were the only three metropolis. There was no open heart surgery done on kids less than 15 kilos. So we were the first one to do it. And we became very popular, this is what happened in one week we had operated six kids out of that one was from Kenya and one was from Pakistan this is what we call transmyocardial revascular research and I know that none of you people have heard about it including your cardiology professor so this was done in Vijaya hospital that is where we started Madras that was the foundation stone. This is the inauguration. Honorable Chief Minister, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, I have the pleasure to inaugurate the Global Congress of Cardiovascular Science here in Madras, Madras today. I had the pleasure yesterday uh, to visit uh, the hospital where Dr. Cherian and his group of doctors uh, are doing excellent work. I was very, very interested to see how advanced they are in that hospital. Uh, they were doing not only complicated acquired heart diseases, revascularization surgery, bypass, and with transmyocardial revascularization, new technique, but they were also doing very complicated congenital heart surgery. Now, I always said, and I still maintain, that congenital heart surgery separates the men from the boys, because that, there the skill of the heart surgeon is really tested. Now, this is the land of VMS. This is when I identified VMS. The small baby in my hand is my granddaughter. She is here. And later on, this is what VMS. And 
that is our school the study i don't know whether you know it this was his excellency lakena and this is as you know it is it is mr shahan shahjahan and this is my father now why i am showing is this you do all these things see you will be amazed to see what you could contribute to the society as long as you don't care who gets the credit in the end what you want to do is you want to do it and you go all out to do it who gets the credit people know the society know because you have done it now this is uh, this is my moon baby she is the first transplant recipient of the country now the reason why i am showing this is dr christian bernard who did the first heart transplant in the world was received by her when he came to us there is another reason recipient is my moon baby a muslim lady the donor hema saundar rajan a brahman lady so dr abdul kalam used to be good a good friend of mine you know before he became president so he used to stay in the anna university guest house he rang me up and asked chariyat was there any difference between that brahman heart and the muslim heart that this is all made by the politicians if you happen to meet any politician in this location please tell them that this is what is life you know we had the opportunity to do the first infant transplant and again this was the first interstate transplant the donor was a 1 year old kid from bangalore and the recipient has been from delhi a one year and 10 month old now we also had the opportunity to do two transplants in one night see this is the third third time it was done in the world first was in newcastle upon tyne then <coughs> down said new york and that is uh, the recipients and one of the recipients bhavani shankar he got married and he has got two kids and this is, this happened about 12 years ago then again you know see what i believe is that this is all providential doesn't come to everybody you might work hard there are so many people spend lot of money brought some surgeons from us to see that they do the first transplant you know the corporate hospital both in chennai as well as in uh, delhi but they didn't get the opportunity so that is what i say with all these things what you need is a providential help if that providential help is not there this will not happen now the other thing what i wanted to convey in the end is this don't be a you know uh, a doctor which follows the rules now we are trying to have atrotropic transplant don't waste any heart if somebody is ejection i don't know wh- whether you will understand what is ejection fraction and all these things anyway people are taken up for transplant when their functioning of the heart is poor ejection fraction 15 so they can't survive with that and we at the same time we discard the heart also when somebody's heart function is less than 25 ejection fraction so if you can combine both 25 plus 15 it might become 40 45 but you can't put it in the same place so we are looking for a different place that is atrotropic transplant that is putting a heart in the abdomen 
leaving the original heart there. So that dog has got two hearts, one in the abdomen, one in the chest. Here if you see that black slide, you can see that it is contracting slowly. And this is the first case of stem cells. So why I took up this is, just to show you people, please don't stick on with this medicine, surgery, obstetric gynecology, etc., etc. There are a lot of other things you can do in this world. Don't become a stereotype doctor. So, that was a four-month-old kid who had severe heart failure. She had this stem cell and that was uh, six years later. Now she is the school cricket captain. This is the Cardiological Society of India. They have got their own TV station. In KMC, you have been one of the most versatile surgeons this country has produced. Uh, the wide range of cardiac surgery, infant surgery, neonatal surgery, complex congenital heart surgery, coronary artery bypass graft surgery, valve surgery, also transplant, the pediatric transplant, adult transplant, retransplant, you could do a wide range, which I think in today's date when we see, even if you put multiple surgeons, they will not be able to do this type of uh, versatile surgeries. Do you think in the current era, this can be possible that one cardiovascular surgeon can do all these types of things or what, what, what do you think means as a person who has seen cardiothoracic surgery, cardiovascular surgery for last four decades, where are we heading? Now first of all, in my time, <clears throat> say from 1975, I was interested only in profession and nothing else. If I was interested in money, I would not have left a $86,000 job coming and joining railways for 1,071 rupees per month as an ad hoc AMO. So what is important to me was do whatever I can and whatever platform I can. There is a saying that you should be in the right place at the right time with the right people. This is the Swiss motto. There is no innovation without research and uh, no progress without innovation. What I want to tell you, young guys, is that don't become a stereotype typical Indian doctor. We all think alike. Then no one is thinking, as it is said. So life has made me realize one thing. Like what Epictetus said, surely God chooses his servants at birth or perhaps even before birth. See, recognition by one's own colleagues in your own field is the greatest tribute a professional can receive. Anyway, I am grateful to all of you and for giving this privilege. Thank you. <laughs>